Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Thomas Peterson. Hello and welcome to another Current Affairs here at Copenhagen Suborbitals. Today we have Bo Brandstrom with us, and Bo, he works at DTU Space, he makes electronics at DTU Space, and he also makes electronics here at Copenhagen's Mortals. And so Bo, you make, uh, so one of your primary functions here at Copenhagen's Mortals is you make the, uh, the circuit boards for, for instance, the Indian controller that sits mm -hmm. in the next rocket, yes. and other uh, circuit boards that we, that we use. Um, but apart from that, that very important task, you also have a, a fetish for, for cameras. And you have made some uh, sort of custom-made camera solutions to us. Yes, uh, fetish might be the, the right <laughs> word for it. Um, we started out a couple of years ago uh, when we didn't have uh, very many uh, GoPro cameras. And I had, uh, started searching for a, uh, a substitute for that. I found uh, a cheap uh, Chinese model that uh, looked promising. And uh, I can show you this, this, this little guy here. Um, that is, well, it's not super quality, but uh, um, it's very cheap. So if it breaks or is destroyed in, in, in an engine set, something like that, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So we can just buy another one. Yeah. It, it, uh, we uh, bought it especially to have uh, high speed um, footage. Yeah. So this does 240 frames per second? Yes, 240 frames per second uh, in a 840 by 480 uh, resolution. Uh, and that's. Well, it could be better, but uh, it's the, the, the cheap uh, yeah. route to go. And so cheap power, what, what is the cost of this? This is camera? around uh, just shy of $100. Okay. So yeah. that's uh, uh, one quarter to one third of what we would pay for a GoPro. Yeah. Okay. And so for the next uh, two launch, so this will be mounted on Sputnik or what will this yes, be used? Yes, this is for the, the railing at, uh, on Sputnik. Um, this one is made for that, and I have added a battery pack to have several hours of operation without uh, getting nervous that uh, the battery will will be drained before we, we launch. Um, and and this is uh, we'll have a couple of these sitting on the railing. Yeah. To look at the, the rocket. So this is one of the uh, the sort of simpler modifications. Yes, this is more or less the original. Yeah. So then you uh, bent, went on and uh, elaborated a bit, and so so then we have this one. Yes, this and one. What is uh, what is inside this box? This uh, has the same camera inside, but it is it has been dismantled. The the casing has been removed uh, because uh, the original has a a bit of a problem with heating up too much. Mm -hmm. So I mounted it on a in a missile enclosure to uh, get rid of the heat. And I also uh, put the battery pack inside, so we have several hours of operation. Mm -hmm. um, and um <coughs> then, well, we have a Wi-Fi antenna for for remote control, and also we have some more or less um, rugged push buttons on the back side and some interface yeah. uh, that we can use. We um, we mainly use this uh, when we do engine tests because that's a fairly rough environment for, for this camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and this one survives better there. Yeah, so it, it also takes some of the uh, vibrations. Yes, it, uh, this is this has been changed a bit to to facilitate the uh, Sputnik uh, mount, uh, but we uh, we usually also use it for for engine tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it almost looks uh, watertight. Is it watertight in this box? Uh, I would or call it splash-proof and gravel-tight. Okay, yeah. that's that's what it is. Yeah, and so you can uh, you can see the, the I mean the video feed directly on. Uh, yes, I have a, a, tablet. a tablet for for uh, adjusting the the view mm -hmm. that we get, um, so we don't have to to guess too much. Yes. We also we could put uh, a monitor on on one of these connectors. Yeah, no, here. so so uh, it says viewfinder on one of the ports. Yeah, I have a, a small LCD screen that I um, have made that can be mounted on here, so it looks almost like a, a very old-fashioned TV camera. Yeah. 
but uh, that's not practical for, for the use that we have here. No. But I just added the feature to, to be sure I, I wouldn't miss it ever. Okay, so then we have uh, another uh, gizmo here. Yes. So we have, so this, you call it the Skycam? The Skyview, Skyview. Uh, Skyview rig, yes. Yeah. This and is so what we have here. This is without the casing. This is what goes inside a box. Mm -hmm. But it is again two of these Chinese uh, cameras. Right. So that's the electronics from from yes, this one. From this one uh, with a battery pack added and uh, on a heatsink to keep them cool because they will be mounted inside a, a larger box. Uh, and then we have two uh, different lenses, uh, a wide lens and a more zoom-like uh, lens and the the idea is that we mount them looking straight up in the sky mm -hmm. uh, and um, right next to the to the launch rail on Sputnik so when uh, Sputnik uh, when uh, the rocket next uh, launches um, uh, these two cameras will follow it uh, while it ascends into the sky yeah and hopefully it will just appears a, as a dot going straight up into yes. the Yes, if, if uh, Fleming and Nupo's uh, software is working as uh, expected, uh, they will stay inside the, the field of view all the, all the time yeah. until well, it disappears from you because of, of the distance. Yes. So that's the idea uh, with this one. Yes. And then we have the, uh, so the last of the four cameras that we brought today. This one looks uh, a bit different. It's very, it's very different. And it's, uh, so can you, so there's, there's two lenses on it. Yep. Can you show us how... Uh, the, the first one, the small one, is um, uh, it's a 20 millimeter lens for, for this camera. It doesn't say much when you compare to 20 millimeters on a normal, um, normal camera. But um, uh, it's a bit zoom. It's the same as this one. Uh, and it has uh, an infrared filter added on top mm -hmm. so that it will only see in infrared. Okay. This is because um, the, well, the idea is that uh, that should facilitate uh, following the rocket because the plume behind the rocket will appear as a white dot in an almost uh, black picture. If, mm -hmm. if there's no uh, clouds at all, the sky will be black in this camera. Yeah. So what, what we saw, uh, for instance, I mean, on the next one launch is that the, the flame from the rocket is actually quite almost transparent. Yes. So it's a bit difficult to see. So on the infrared here, you uh, you can easily follow it. Yes. Simply that was the idea. I have tested several times uh, while we did engine tests uh, how how to if if uh, this uh, filter was was the best. I had several different filters that I tried out. On this one, seems to be the best uh, for the purpose. Yeah. So that should uh, make it easier to follow the rocket. So that's for following the rocket. And then yeah. uh, there's another lens. Yes, that's oh, okay. even more zoom lens. So uh, the idea would be that if you have the rocket in this field of view, you should automatically have it in the other one. Mm -hmm. That is um, more zoomed in, more uh, a closer look at the rocket. Yeah. So and that uh, gives you a, a regular view, not an infrared. No, that's a normal uh, normal view. Mm -hmm. and, and we have inside. Uh, it's it's meant to have a, a bag over your head because there's very much light. Yeah, so there's the so much sunlight out on yeah. the sea. So, uh, so, and, uh, so you're supposed to wear the bag over your head. Uh, more or less. Yeah. I I, I considered call it, calling it the ostrich cam, but mm -hmm. uh, I haven't decided yet if, oh, if that will be reasons. the name. But inside we have two. Um, so there's two, two small the, monitors. Uh, ah, better better stand aside. So. Um, and I, I don't have a, a, a suitable infrared target to show here, so this will be most well, black. We should have had a flame over in the background. Yeah, the if we have a lighter, a lighter, then we could test it. But then this is the regular uh, normal mm -hmm. picture. So, and then you have the, um, the handlebar to make it easier to, to point it upwards. Yeah, so and the, the red the uh, recording button. The red recording button is here. I also have a... A connector for um, charging the batteries and, uh, and on off down here and because you have the bag over your head I have uh, installed a small fan, a fan so you to get some light uh, so, sorry some air so the operator won't sweat yeah. to uh, melt away so he can emerge from the bag and still have his head on mm -hmm. so that, that's the idea behind this one yeah so uh, very interesting and we'll uh, we'll test all of them out on uh, the next two launch 
yes. in, uh, in a few weeks, in uh, four yes. or five weeks or so uh, from now. I, I hope that uh, we also um, have a chance to try them out a bit uh, during our Harbor uh, tests mm. and maybe our sea test yes. before we go to Bornholm. Yes, we should uh, certainly test At least we will we'll try to, to rehearse the placement and, yeah. and so on with the cameras. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, Bo. That was a, a nice uh, walkthrough of your uh, camera solutions yeah, my pleasure. that you also make, uh, besides your main project of making yes. uh, boards and electronics for the Nexo one, yes. one and two rounds. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Bo. My pleasure. So uh, that was it for uh, this little episode with Bo. And remember that if you have any questions for us, then you can email us at ask uh, at copsup.com. And we will uh, try to answer some of the questions in uh, this video series. Thank you. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page.